Right, look, I've got myself a new van, Governor. Look, isn't it? It's a new van. Not the Renault van. This is a Land Rover Defender 110 commercial, or as they call it, the Land Rover Defender 110 hardtop. Now, I'll put a picture on the screen. The original Land Rover Defender 110 hardtop actually was two doors and it had a great big long back. This is more similar to the Discovery 4 and Discovery 5 commercials we've seen. So we are going to have a detailed review. We're going to have a look at this one. This one is a little bit special. And we're going to say, is this the highest spec van you can buy in the UK? Right, we're going to start at the front. Let's have a talk about the engine. So the engine on the hardtop, you can specify. We've been on the builder and you can specify them with only two engine choices. So on the normal saloon, you've got about six engine choices with the hybrids and the V8s and the diesel 200s and the petrols. There is no petrol option on the hardtop. You can choose from the D250 and the D300. Now, this is interesting, well, to me. So you've got the D250 and the D300. They're both six cylinder. They're both three liter. They're both diesel. And it looks like they're essentially the same engine. It's just they're tuned to different power levels, which is not uncommon. There's lots of Mini Coopers have been doing this for years. So basically it's a six cylinder inline diesel engine, loads of torque. So you've got the, so this one is the 300 brake horsepower. Now, when you go to build one, you can have a 250 or a 300. Now, if you want all the extras, the features you'll see on this one, the HSE spec, you can't get the HSE spec unless you go for the D300. And we'll talk about that a bit more and some of the costs with that. Right, so we are gonna have a look at this. So there's a few extras <laughs> quite a few extras on this car. The first one you'll notice is the Carpathian Grey. That is an extra, it's about an 1800 pound extra if you want the and Carpathian. It's quite sparkly, I don't actually think the camera is going to do it justice, but it is. So we saw the other day, we got George helping again today, the other day George, we saw Carpathian Grey on the Carpathian V8 we went to look at, but that was a matte. Now this is the same colour, the same paint job, but it hasn't got the protection film. Now you can, if you want, specify the protection film and get that on there as well. Right, so it's a van, so everyone's going, right, should we start by looking in the van bit and then we'll jump back to the other, because everyone wants to see this is a van. So let, let's look in the side door. So this is a four door van. So I guess these aren't for pedestrian access. This is what you would call a side loading door, I guess, George, yeah? yeah. Right, whoa, what's that going on down there? Right, so yes, so you want another extra you will notice and it's about a 2,200 pound optional upgrade is the deployable side steps. So you'll see those there, they should deploy. I haven't quite worked out what, and one thing we'll have to work out is they do have a mode where you can keep them fixed out so that you can get on the roof. So if you were using and you had a roof load on your van, this is a van, remember this is a panel van. You can see these on eBay and this is actually, there is one on eBay and it's not as high a spec as this and it is the most expensive van currently not on eBay, on Auto Trader. And I'll put a picture of that on the screen now. So there you go, so look at this. So also note we have got keyless entry. So this has got the, which is higher spec than our Model S, not bad for a van. So we've already got a van with a lush diesel engine. We've got deployable side steps. Woo, look at that, right then. So in the back, you will notice we've got this bulkhead. So they've configured a bulkhead here and it's, it's a double, we were looking at it earlier and it's a sort of double thickness. It must be some sort of composite panel. It's quite thick and you've got these. Now they've obviously set this back a little bit. Now, one, I'll put the figures on the screen. One thing that's a bit weird with the van is you would think the van would have more volume. Now, well, it, it has no rear seats or anything. It has no rear seats. Yes, yeah, so we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Let me, open, let me open the back. Ooh. Hello. Um, so the van you would hope had have more, it hasn't got rear seats, but it actually has, whether you measure it dry or wet. Now I don't get this, but manufacturers measure volumes of luggage space with, with some dry blocks or something, or, or how much liquid you could get in it. But I'll put the figures on the screen, but the saloon behind the front seat actually has more, the car, the stick, has more volume than the van. Um, I'm not sure quite how that works, but we'll, we'll gloss over that. Right, so you'll see you have got a level, a level loading platform, which is really good. And you've got rubber matting, and then you've got these 
um, lockable containers. Now, on the Stig, we don't have this. Now, this is really lush. We'll come and let's start over there. I'll show you. Live demonstration. Oh. Press down, and then there you go. And so they're on they're on gas struts. So these are really nice little fixings here. They've got it all on gas struts, so you don't it pops open and holds it there for you. And you can see how thick the floor is here. We've got a super lush floor. And this is quite nice because they also have this uh, locking entrance here, don't they? Yeah. Now I think that maybe if you've got longer things you need to feed in, maybe you can feed them in through that section there. So there we go. So we've got we've got those and we've got that, and they're all out of sight. So you can put your stuff in there and. It, Notice the rear windows are blanked off. So there's a panel here, a plastic panel, but you still have the ability to get out. Now, one thing we were talking about earlier, um, the guys whose van this is, this isn't our van, was saying that he was in the back cleaning and he was worried if the door had shut, how could he get out? And obviously he can get out the sides, but what on a short wheel base on the 90 hard top, how can you get out the back? So you can't climb over into the front because you've got this bulkhead panel here. And um you do get out in style you do get out with a chrome door handle oh they got a nice embellished so yeah so one other thing we noted actually while we've got the rear door open is that there is no speaker or there appears to be no speaker now because this is a hse spec this has got the meridian sound system but it doesn't appear to have any rear speakers so i'm not sure how they account for that so I'm not sure how you can get the surround sound that you need to have them in each corner. So that would be an interesting question. If anyone knows how they do that, let us know. So there we go. One other thing to note, this, this van, it is a van, has the rear view camera mounted into the, so as well as a 360 degree camera system, where you've got the, you've got a rear camera mounted here. You've got the cameras mounted in the underneath of the wing mirrors. You've got the camera mounted. So you've got a, full 360 degree camera system you've also additionally instead of a rear view mirror you have got a rear view camera now we'll look at that and we'll talk about the advantages when we go into the interior remind me george right one thing i was just about to show you was the pop-up so here we go gas struts again now i really need to fit this into our land rover this would be much better for us when we're camping and stuff wouldn't it george yeah. this gas strut lift up thing so we need to take a look look at how the fittings but it it looks like it may be fitted onto the, the and i think there is someone who has who has done this but there we go that is a nice little panel that and you've got the bracket there for locking it you've got all your standard toe downs standard tires now one extra that this van has got is it's got the off-road pack. Now, part of the off-road pack is it comes with the 240 volt power outlet. It's only live when you've got the ignition on. Um, so that is one thing, probably with the engine running. But you've still got all your hook locations here. So you can, you can mount your hooks. You've got the locations here. You've still got the rear handlebar grabs, which I guess could be handy. There we go. And we've still got these. These Alpine lights really come into their own because this is quite a dark interior. One other option you've got on this van is gone for the ebony headlining. Now, you might think that's a bit of a, an opulent luxury for a van, but actually I think it's got a practicality because you're less likely to see the dirt on a black headlining than on the cream headline. And it actually matches in with all the rear panel work. And where you've got the light coming in through the Alpine windows, I think the Alpine windows work really well on, yeah. this, on this van, George. Right, what's another cool thing about this van? Obviously, you've got the standard feet. Ah, right. So if you buy the base model hardtop van, it's a van, you do not get air suspension. So you, you haven't got such a good ride. You're on coils. Now, a lot of people, we know there's some old school people out there and they go, coils, love coils, air suspension, too complicated. I'm a fan of air suspension. That's I like the comfort. I like the fact it can, when we go off road, we can go up. When we want to hitch a trailer, we can go down. So on this model, you have these extra switches here. So I've just learned something. Every day's a learning day, isn't it, George? Yeah. Talking of which, George just did his GCSE exams. I'm embarrassing him now. He did really well. He got all seven, eights and nines. Right, well done, George. Right, um, we were on the, yeah. So what you've got to do is you've got to close the door. Now, remember this has got soft close. So we just 
luxurious van feature. Luxurious van. If only every van had soft closing rear doors, right then. And then you open it again. Now that resets it. There's a timeout that if you've not used it for a while. So let's demonstrate what I was trying to demonstrate. All right, you probably have to look. You can see the suspension is going down. Or I can move the suspension up again. So air suspension is practical. If you're hitching a trailer, now this car will tow three and a half tons. It's also got, but we need a tow bar, George. Where's the tow bar? Such witchcraft and trickery. Oh, oh, there's a gentle chiming. Voila! So there is an electronically deployable tow bar. Now that's really handy because it keeps it out the way. It keeps it tucked out the way. It's neat. You're not banging your leg on it. It's a little bit cool. Um, so at least you've got that there. And also on the screen, apparently, you, there's a mode and you can, it will give you extra cameras some of the features built into the land rover with the tow assist uh, give you extra cameras as you're driving along and it also has a nose weight sensor which could be really handy if you want to check so if you are towing and you're going places this van is a really good tow machine i've just noticed something as well on the side here we have a polished aluminium Am I right in that? A I'm brush stainless steel. Brush stainless steel. Uh, uh, rear, that is an accessory item I'd there. I'd say that them. does look rather flash for a van. Van, yeah. And it, again, it's practical because you are going to, in a van, you are going to scratch this area here. An upgrade from a Ford Transit. It is a little flasher than a Ford Transit. Right, have we covered the back? We've got the hooks, we've got the load space covering. Now, this is interesting. So obviously you can see we've got the panels here over the back. Everything is panelled off. So you're in no danger of breaking the glass. There's no exposed glass other than tucked right up in there. We've got the black headlining right there. And there we go, we've got all that. We'll put the tow bar away in a minute. Um, this rear panel here is interesting. I think this panel, so on our 110 and the 110, you've got that little signature panel, the little notice board, we call it. And some people have asked about doing the delete and we've done the video where we've ripped off that panel and you could put stickers over the exposed. I think this could be another option. I think this is one plastic panel here that goes over the entire side. So I think sandwiched underneath this is the glass. So we'll have a look at that, but that could be an option for those out there that want this sort of limousine look. You can cover the glass. Looks a lot better. Right, let's keep going. Ooh, look at these beautiful alloy wheels. So these are 20 inch. So um, they're, the top speed of this vehicle is 119 miles an hour. I think I've got that right. But you can increase it if you put to 130. If you put, that's quick for a van, isn't it, George? That's very quick for a van. You can increase it to the 130, but you've got to put the 22 inch wheels on. Now, I got this slightly wrong in the car painting. I was wondering if it's to do with gearing or something, but it's actually to do with the speed rating of the tires. When you go to the 22 inch tires, they're higher speed rated and Land Rover will reconfigure or delimit your car to match your higher performance tires. Now, I'm not sure whether you can do that after you've purchased it or whether you have to purchase it I'm not sure how that works. You have to talk to a Land Rover dealer about that. Right, so we have got all weather tires on here and we've got these diamond, you look at that, the diamond turned. But, and I think the color choice here, this is a dark gray and it almost matches exactly the Carpathian gray. So I think this was a clever wheel, wheel choice for that. So 20 inches, and also it's, if you go 22, you are gonna damage your wheel rims more. You've still got a good chunk of tires. So I like this. We had 20s on the Stig for a while, but when we started to go off road, we went down to the 18s. Now I'm not sure if you'll be able to get 18s on here. I think you probably can. Um, certainly the base hard top is, and in fact, I am gonna say you can, because the base one, you can have the 300, or the 250, so you've got the smaller brakes on here. So if you wanted the steels, you can do that. Right, there we go. So we've covered the side, we've done that. We've done the deploy. We are nearly ready to go into, so you have got your indicators on here. You have got your 360 degree camera. You have got your projector light that projects an image of a Defender on the ground. And you've also got your wave sensors. 
that is true, George. He is not wrong. So under here, we have a weight sensor. Now, one advantage of the deployable side steps, George, is there are land rovers say that if you fit fixed side steps or tubes, it may interfere with the weight sensors because the weight sensor is looking down here. And if you've got something there now, one advantage is with these deployable steps. And actually, just drive down a minute, George. One thing I've noticed about these deployable steps, with any Land Rover, even a van, you, you need to have off-road capability. And I was keen to see how Land Rover had engineered these side steps, these deployable side steps, and how much impact it would have. But if we have a little look under there, in fact, we'll put the air suspension up later and have a look. They've actually got it really low profile. So there's very little hanging down in the way of brackets. I think it will have a slight reduction in ground clearance, but Land Rover will look like they've done a really neat job on that. Right, so you've got weight sensors. Now that's pretty tricky for a van. So this van will go through water 900 millimeters deep. So it will come up to here. But because you've got the air suspension, the height of the car raises, so it'll actually come up to a height of 900 millimeters. Now, if you buy the base model without the air suspension upgrade, you will, I think it's about, and I'll put the figures on the screen, let's see how good my guess is, I think it's about 800 millimeters the height. With the coils, you haven't got that ability to go up. So, but still not bad for a van, eh, George? Not bad for That's a van. That's got to be the deepest puddle you can go through in yeah. any van, I reckon. There you go. Lola. Is Lola feeling unloved? This is Lola. This is our company van. Not quite as flash. Right. So we have done the front. We have done the corners. Right. So one other thing this car has amongst this plethora of upgrades is it has the black pack. They call it something trick. But if you look here, the checker plate on my car is a matte textured finish. These are painted gloss black. We've also point out uh, we have got the gloss black roof on here. We've got the gloss black mirrors so we have got a complete this is an extra as well but the hard top does come with as standard it does come with the roof bars now you're gonna have to put crossbars on that to bolt anything on but at least these are bolted into the car ready for you which is good and useful we have got mud flaps we've gone for the classic mud flaps on this front and rear that is another extra but there we go right choo -choo -choo. As part of the black pack, not only do you get this, you also get the lettering front and rear in gloss black, and you get this grill strip surround in gloss black also. So this car has got the radar mounted in here. It's got all the features. It's got emergency braking. It's got, I believe this has also got adaptive cruise control. We'll pop in and see if that lights up. So other than that, the front is pretty, so we have got fog lights. So again, this is pretty high, but oh, we have got LED matrix headlights in here. So again, this is part of the HSE spec. So this has got the headlights that they've got a camera mounted behind the rear view mirror. It looks at what traffic's coming and it pretty much puts full beam on everywhere other than the bit that's going to be antisocial and affect oncoming traffic. So it gives you really good nighttime visibility i have not driven with led matrix headlights but i think if you do a lot of driving and let's face it it is a van and you are going to be driving your van a lot at night in the winter if you've got that ability to have better lighting that has got to be a good thing right let's jump inside shall we george yeah. you jump in that side i'll jump in the other one. right you join us inside our van coffee we were going to go we were going to go to greg's weren't we george because we thought we'd look like proper builders if we had a greg sausage roll but there we go so you have got tw twin cup holders here you've got usb i haven't seen these before no these, these this is cool you've got a little table here yeah you've got i don't know if it's necessarily big enough for a phone but you could rest it there and you've got all your usb these usb c USB -C, USB -C. USB c so you have got loads of charges so you can charge all your phones because you're going to be working I mean, when it's a van, your your cab, you guys all know, this is your workplace. Right, so this is an extra. So this has got the third seat. So normally they call it, so normally if you get the base model, they call it walk through interior. I'm not sure where you're gonna walk through to because you've got a blockage there. But um, so it doesn't have a center console like I've got on mine. This is the jump seat. So this gives you a third seat complete with seat belt point to note there is no isofix seat belt brackets in here and and there's no storage that we could work out um you get under or do anything um 
under here so that's probably i think that's a, uh not the best use of space i think maybe there is space if anyone knows how to get used to that space under there it would be kind of handy to have a little stash what do you think george you think or it could be a tray it would be good if you had a, a drawer that slid out here or something yeah well, we're missing something there. There's a little bit of checker plate here, though, that you can, they can, well, it's fake checker plate, fake. that they can put their feet on. Rest on. Right, so let me just show you. I was talking then about, so what you have here is you won't see this in the normal saloon. So you have got an isofix point. So if you have got to take a youngster out with you, um, you can clip the baby seat in. But it'll be a bit, you will have the baby here in the bigger seat. But then this, I mean, let's see. Shall I see if I can sit in this jump seat, George? I guess you're going to have to. Oh, now do you remember the, the old? Do you remember the story about the old volume switch, George? That they, they 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 made it so that when you rotated this, it didn't turn the volume on and off. You know the old mute thing. Yeah. Land Rover said they they done that purposefully because you might hit that with your knee. Maybe right. So you are straddled a bit. I mean, my feet have not gone anywhere. You zoom back a bit, George, and have a look from out. I, I mean, I. I guess I could, I could put my feet up like that, couldn't I? Um, mm, yeah, that's, it doesn't look like the most comfortable. It's, it, it's comfy, it's a nice seat. And obviously, one of the reasons we've got this rear view mirror, it's it's not on at the minute, I think it's timed out, um, but is you need the camera on the back because you can't, otherwise every time you look, if this was you a mirror, you'd just face. see my beautiful face, which is not going to be ideal. Now. One one thing the guy who's got this car said to us is he said um, th he doesn't find it as intuitive or natural looking at the rear view screen, the rear view camera screen, because normally when you look at a mirror, your eyes focus not on the mirror, but on the image of the mirror. So it's actually a long distance focus um, as if you were looking out the window. But on the screen, you actually your eyes have to focus on the screen. So it's a difference of your eyes have to adjust if you're normally looking around um which may be easy maybe less tricky we haven't driven with it right so we've talked about that what about ah one i've talked about the isofix i've talked about the middle seat let me get off the middle seat um so now th the middle seat is an option and i believe it's i'll put the prices on the screen so i don't get it wrong i think it's about 851 pound option now on a normal car that would give you if you had five seats it would give you six it's not much of a percentage increase but in this vehicle it's actually given you a 50 percent increase in your seating capacity and if you think about it there might just be occasions where you need someone and the owner of this car was telling us that he needed to go and pick up someone and a child the other day and it was really handy and he zipped to halfords got an isofix seat and clipped it straight in so Having the extra seat could prove useful. There's, if you ever need to know how to use it, there is a little silver tab here. You pull the tab, which relaxes that and goes down and we're back. Now, one thing I said, I said, oh, that, that seat looks like it's at a perfect height as an armrest. And uh, he said, you know what? That is the comfiest armrest you can get. It's just at the right position. So this actually does have the added benefit of giving you that extra armrest. Right, this is, now, we saw this in the Carpathian, didn't we, the other week, George? This is the larger screen. So this is the 11.4 inch screen, which is the diagonal distance. And this is actually 60% bigger. And we checked it because we didn't believe that going from 10 inches diagonally to 11.4 would give you 60% increase in screen area. But it does. I did the maths on the Carpathian video. And this is, this is really quite... We love this upgrade. We love this upgrade. We, we did say... If you, and it's meant to be quite an affordable one as well. Yes, this is the up, this, why would you not have this upgrade? This is 140 pounds. So, very good afternoon boss, look at that. <laughs> okay, so there we go, absolute 80s, a man after my own heart. So this is a really nice clear screen. And, and uh, am I right, George, has that got a slight curvature to it or is that just, no, I think, I don't know. I think you're waffling. I think you're waffling. One cool thing I've noticed, I don't know if we can set up an ours, is on the nav, on the dash, it's got like a real world view. Oh, you can see my solar panels on the Have roof of my warehouse. No, I haven't seen that before, George. We ought to try and do something like that. Yeah, so that is really cool. So so we have got the 360 degree camera system on here. We could activate it. We could go to cameras. Let's see if it'll work for us now. So there we go. You can see, and this is really cool. We like this, didn't we, George? As you close the door, 
it closes the door. And if I rotate <laughs> around, oh, oh, you can. There you go. You can see my door. It's and open. then, and then, if we put the hazard warning lights on, like it puts the hazard warning lights on on the car as well, Very which is cool. indicators and stuff. So there we go. So that is, I love stuff that does stuff like that. And actually, George, it's got it in the right colour. But have you noticed the deliberate error, George? It's not a van. If I was paying nine hundred pounds for the paint in the roof black. I wanted to show black on my graphic. That so, is true. so there's a little thing for Land Rover. Could you make the graphics actually match the customer's car spec exactly? I don't know if it's coincidentally grey or programmed as grey, but if I paid for the black roof, I would like the black roof. Has it got the crossbars? Right, we're waffling. So we have got the eight-speed automatic gearbox. We do not have paddle shifts. The paddle shifts so far are only available on the V8 editions we do have on the hse we have got the bright finished alloy pedals right the other thing we don't have in this car and there's no provision for is wireless charging so there is no wireless charging pad because that's normally integrated into the standard center console if you specify that as an option so this guy's put an extra one here which is a perfectly adequate way of resolving the issue of wirelessly charging your phone you have got apple carplay you have got android and we've got to remember, George, we've got to keep reminding ourselves, what is this, George? A van. It's a van. We and have got Apple it CarPlay. It's a lovely van. And we've got these, I believe we have these cushions. These from... seats, George, these yeah. seats. Now, how many ways would you think you could rotate a seat? I think these are 14-way seats, George. I think there's actually 14. Uh, oh, there's uh, probably up, some, like, down, left. Massage, <laughs> changing your life. Anyway, I don't even know. I'll put Lumbar the spec. Support. It might be 12, it might be 14. I'm pretty sure this is a four-way electric seat headrest so not only is the four to anyway so there we go so you're yeah, guaranteed we have from the seat. we have got the windsor leather interior here we've got again we've got the and as the spec seat says we do have a sunglass holder there you go being used, being used. There we go. right so we've got the emergency call assist we've got everything so this car is a fully connected car it can do software over the air as Land Rover release updates. It's got software over the air updates. Now, we were going to talk a little bit more. Oh, we were going to see if it had cruise control. Yes, we have got the adaptive cruise control. You can see the buttons are all lit up here. So this car is configured with the adapt. We have got a heated steering wheel in this van, George. We've that got, is a, I mean, for a van. That for alone. a van, we have got speed camera recognition, speed sign recognition, speed limiting. We have got... Um, it, it would make you want to work if you're this in your yeah. van. Well, it'd make you want to drive around all day, but if you're doing not drive, right. Okay, I was going somewhere. So, when you build your car, you start off with a choice of a hard top, and then it takes you to another screen, and you can choose between the D250, so this is the diesel 250, or the D300, which is the 300 brake horsepower. But the difference in price between the two is £11,000. Now, bear in mind, they're both six-cylinder. They're both three-litre diesel engines. So, th this is the same engine? like It's it's like the same engine. George, George is right here. It's the same physical same engine. Same amount of cylinders. Same amount of cylinders. I think it's the same components. 11, something, why? How can they justify the difference? But it's only when you go through to build it that you see when you go for the bigger engine, the base spec is higher. So, don't be too scared when you think 11,000... 11,000 pounds for 50 brake horsepower. You work that out, pounds per horsepower, that's just... Go big or go home. It is go big or go home. Right, now in this spec, I don't know if we're allowed to say how much this car would cost um, with all the extras we've got, but you are talking above 80,000 pounds for a car, for a van. For did a I van. say a car? You did. Right, for a van of this specification, it is in excess of 80,000 pounds. So why would people buy this van? Right, it's a good question. I mean, it is a go anywhere, do anything van. It is the most versatile van you can buy. I, I challenge anyone to find a more versatile van. But there are certain tax reasons. So in the UK, there are rules. If you take your van home from work and use it to get backwards and forwards from work, there is a, you're allowed to do that with a minimal benefiting kind. So it is tax efficient if you own or run a business to buy one of these vans and then you can take this home and it's got a high degree of comfort now 
That is why you see a lot of pickup trucks, double cab pickup trucks and commercially derived vehicles in the UK being driven by business owners. But this is slightly changed because they've changed the laws on electric cars at the moment. And again, I'm not an accountant, so check this with your accountant. But electric cars actually have a zero benefit in kind at the moment. I think it's changing. it might be changing just at the moment now. Um, and it's going to go to a 1%. So electric cars are also the government is using this incentive to reduce company car tax to encourage people to drive different cars right so we have got the meridian sound system here we have got the clear sight warning that warns you if cyclists or cars are approaching as you open a door we've obviously got only two electric windows because we've only got two doors you cannot open the rear windows obviously they're covered with plastic panels so well, this is a pretty high spec van. I would say this is the highest spec van you can buy. We've, this one is fully loaded. They are about 54,000 pounds. I'll put some figures on the screen for those that you want that you can go. I'll put a link to the Land Rover build configurator where you can build your own van. There we go. That is our review of this high spec van. Is it is the most expensive van you can buy in the UK right now. Um, is it the best? Is it the most versatile? Would you buy one? Let us know. Comment below.